trade tensions and relations between China and the United States, the world's top two largest economies. China imports capital-intensive goods and high-tech products from the United States. It exports labor-intensive products. So do the structural differences between these two countries hurt or benefit the United States? Who really benefits from this relationship? Here's CGTN's Lili Liu with more. Official data showed that China directly invested over 16.9 billion U.S. dollars in 2016, becoming the fifth biggest investor in America. The amount of capital and the large range of investments brought rapid growth to the U.S. information technology services and manufacturing sectors. Naturally, the recent trade tensions between the two nations have aroused great concern. They're a huge concern. They're a huge concern because we've been working really hard for over 10 years in growing our market and, and growing our consumer base in China. And this will have an impact on us and, and our importers and our partnerships. Wine traders like Honig in California's Napa Valley complain about the trade conflicts. That's partly because American employment relies on Chinese investment to a certain extent. Chinese companies hired 91,000 local employees in the U.S. in 2016, tripling the employment number from 2013. For China, American high-tech products give consumers a chance to enjoy a high-quality lifestyle. American companies also boost development in China and advance Chinese technology. Right, then let's dig a little deeper into this uh, particular story. Stephen Roach is a senior fellow at Yale University's Jackson Institute of Global Affairs. He's also a senior lecturer at its School of Management. Before that, though, among other things, he was Morgan Stanley's chief economist. He joins us now live. Thank you for your time this evening, Professor. Um, is the market reaction to the tariffs and the threat of escalation, is that reaction overdone? I don't think that's uh, the case. You know, the, uh, both the United States and China are um, heavily committed over the last uh, 25 to 30 years to building a, um, uh, a strong economic relationship and one that involves uh, many uh, uh, other partners around the world through supply chain uh, connections. And, um, you know, the markets are uh, – Certainly, uh, we're priced in a very optimistic uh, position at the end of last year, hoping that this relationship would uh, continue to underpin uh, the, um, uh, the trend in, in, in global trade. And so uh, to the extent that, you know, uh, doubts get thrown on uh, that key assumption, uh, there's, there's a good deal of consternation and understandable volatility. The fact that the signals are mixed and that you know one day uh, they seem to get uh, worse the next day they seem to get better sometimes several times in the same day uh, if anything compounds the volatility and adds to the confusion but the bottom line is that um, these markets uh, certainly equity markets in the United States are priced for an ongoing uh, continuation of the relationship between the United States and China, and if that uh, gets thrown into serious question, then the markets will correct uh, very sharply. Indeed. Um, assuming that China's counter-tariffs come into force, how many American jobs really are at stake here? Brookings had an analysis a little earlier today pointing to over 2 million jobs in 40 industries as being vulnerable. Do you agree? I, I think it's hard to be quite as precise as that study, which I've looked at carefully. It's a very um, uh, sort of well-designed effort to map uh, uh, employment in uh, uh, China-centric uh, export industries on a state-by-state -state basis. Um, I think two million uh, is a you know reasonable ballpark for uh, 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 total disruption of the export flows over a, uh, a long period of time in the items that uh, China has announced that they will uh, retaliate on. Uh, but that would, that would take many years to uh, unfold. The real risk, I think, is, is if there is uh, continued escalation uh, in um, uh, one move after another, and that could really do a damaging blow to uh, business and consumer confidence in the United States and the employment 
uh, uh, costs uh, from that type of uh, ever escalating uh, trade tensions would then uh, be, be probably well in excess of the estimates that uh, Brookings has prepared on a on a more narrow uh, uh, basis. Indeed. Uh, one last question for you, Professor. Given how spread out manufacturing tends to be around the world today, companies have supplies in very different countries, and the risk of continued escalation in this particular dispute, isn't there the risk of collateral damage here to companies that do sell products in both countries but are neither American nor Chinese? Well, you're alluding to very important linkages that have been built up over the last 20 years through global supply chains, and, and they're particularly strong insofar as the, um, uh, the flow of goods from China uh, to the United States are concerned. Uh, the um, uh, researchers at the OECD and the World Trade Organization have put together uh, a very careful uh, uh, effort to estimate uh, the degree of, um, uh, of value added uh, that takes place directly inside of China and the value that comes from uh, inputs and um, uh, components uh, from other countries that are assembled in China. And their latest estimates suggest that uh, for um, uh, every $100 of uh, goods that are shipped from China to the United States, about 35 to 40 dollars uh, of, of that 100 dollars reflects components from other countries um, all over Asia uh, and elsewhere around the world. So a disruption to uh, Chinese shipments would have a very significant impact uh, on um, uh, you know, countries in East Asia uh, and even some countries in Europe who are integrated into this uh, China-centric uh, global value chain. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Stephen Roach from Yale University. Thank you very much for your time this evening, sir. So then, let's move on to the African Union. Um, it suggested that the World Trade Organization, the WTO, you remember them, uh, that it should mediate this trade dispute between China and the United States. In an interview with CGTN, the chair of the AU Commission, Musa Faki Mohammed, has said that the AU doesn't encourage sidelining states in the name of trade. He says Africa will take precautionary measures to minimize any negative effects in this looming trade war. Mr. Chair, unfortunately, now in the world, we are an, seeing an evolving situation, a sort of a trade war between the United States and China. First of all, what do you think is the solution for this uh, problem? I am concerned because if there is a, a war, a trade war between the two most important economies, the two important, uh, important economies of, 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 of the world, between China and, uh, uh, and the United States, it's necessarily uh, uh, not hurt the both country, but it can uh, hurt the world, the globe. So uh, my, uh, my hope is uh, uh, that these uh, most important uh, uh, countries uh, will find uh, a way uh, within the World Trade Organization to, to find a solution and uh, it could impact uh, the whole world. So we don't need this. I think there is a, a soft way uh, very, very uh, uh, within this organization to fix this kind of disputes. As Africa is not an island, it could be affected by this problem. What is uh, the work being done at least to avoid or perhaps uh, minimize the effects of this uh, uh, sort of trade war? It is uh, our interest that uh, um, multi-parties must be respected. Uh, we think also uh, that isolationism is not a solution of this kind of, of issue, in particular trade. So first, we have to transform ourselves and to try to fix our own problem as a continent, and then uh, cooperate, and we uh, uh, can set uh, a profitable uh, partnerships with, uh, with others.